Yes, Liam, brother. Hello, mate. You okay? Yeah, what's happening, mate? You good? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, mate. Thank you very much for coming on the Fuse UK. It's much appreciated. Of course, man. Thanks for having me. No problem, mate. I thought, um, wondered if we could start, mate, by telling us how you got into combat sports and fighting. Yeah, no worries. So um, I just started um, late, actually, in my life. So when I moved to Sweden nearly like five and a half years ago now, I uh, I started um, martial arts from scratch, you know. Uh, yeah. When I was back in England, of course, I was just like, uh, I used to fight, but nothing on martial arts level, you know. So the first time I entered the gym was literally like five, or five and a half years ago when I come to Sweden. And I just got hooked on it and I started with like uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai and I was um, doing like two classes a day at that point. Yeah. And I was just hooked on it for for a, a good solid year. I was doing like two classes a day, a day six days a week. And um, I got like just, I come far very quickly just because I was like so much into it. So yeah, I only started like when I was 27 years old, like five and a half years ago. So were you was it? growing up though? Like were you getting into fights and things? Obviously. Yeah, yeah. When I was in England, like it's, I've always been a scrapper, you know. Yeah, but uh, when I started in the gym, I realized that, that is not the same. You know, I, 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 I realized I couldn't really fight. It's scrapping is not the fucking same as like being a martial artist. You know, so uh, I've always been into fighting and like having a having a punch up, but nothing, nothing on martial arts level until I started in the gyms. Like, yeah. So, did you have any mixed martial arts um, fights in um, like MMA? professional yeah uh, not professional no uh i've only fought on amateur level in um in mma and in, in muay thai um yeah. so i've had like six uh mma fights five muay thai fights and just a load of brazilian jiu-jitsu yeah and, and k1 i i fought k1 in um pro rules but not as a professional you know yeah yeah so what gave you the crazy idea of going into King of the Streets, bro? <laughs> <laughs> because um, I I got I I did like a I got offered like a title fight in in bare knuckle boxing. I'd never boxed before in my life, never done bare knuckle in my life, and it was against um, uh, Rocky Morgan, and uh, I got flattened by him. He he, um, he was just so much more experienced than me, and like really. Uh, give me a like an eye opener of like what level I, w I was at and what level like he was at at that mm. point. And uh, before that, I'd also like lost uh, my last like Muay Thai fight and my last MMA fight, so I was coming off three three losses, right? Um, and then I uh, I seen this King of the Streets on Instagram and it it interested me a lot and I've always wanted to do that type of underground fight and I think it like fits me well so I I didn't tell anybody about it and just me and my uh, my wife Matilda went there alone when she was pregnant and um I what's won the fight it? what's it like <laughs> all set up and that because I've heard so many things yeah it's it's in a league of its own mate the the atmosphere there and like the whole thing. Like I've I've heard a few people think it's set up, you know, like the way they cover their faces and like um they're not like it, it's they're, it's just like a set up like the crowd and shit, but it's not. It's it's real, man. The the hooligans all over from Europe, they all come over and like they need to keep their faces covered because it's illegal, obviously. And some of them are like wanted over there and shit like that, but. So I, I won that fight and it was just made for me. I love that shit. So now I'm 4-0 in King of the Streets and the level since, even since I've started my first fight there has gone uh, like a lot better, you know. There's now, before maybe it was a lot of like just hooligans, street fighters and stuff, but now they're coming in with background, you know, like from martial arts as well. Yeah. So the level is is up there now. So what was it like with the nerves and not going to this King of the Streets? Because I've got to be honest, bro, your game is fuck. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, of course, it's intimidating, especially for for me, because I'm not from that type of, like, hooligan side, that hooligan world or, like, anything like that. So 
I'm there with my pregnant wife on my own and uh, like just go stepping in there f- f- fighting. I fought a guy from uh, Germany, I think he was from uh, the Colon Hooligans. So he had supporters there. There was a lot of Germans there and I was there on my own. So it it is intimidating, you know, like I see a lot of people come on their own now and I've been there. I know how intimidating it is, you know. Yeah. It's not the same. I don't get as intimidated anymore. You know, I'm part of Hype Crew now. I'm on 4-0. For me, King of the Streets is home. So yeah. now I enjoy it. Everything that comes with King of the Streets just fuels me and, like, helps me focus and fight a lot better, you know, when I'm there. So everything that I had at the start just has just uh, made me the fight I, I am now, like. Yeah, is it true that you found out the venue where you're fighting the day before or something? Or the morning? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, all, it's, all, it's all super <laughs> secret. <laughs> What's that? It, it can't be like far away. For, you, you must be told a rough location. Yeah, so the, yeah, yeah. So it's always in the same spot in Sweden, the same like area. Oh, is that but where it's in Sweden? Yeah, it's in Sweden and in, in Gothenburg, but the the spot it, it always changes you know they'll um they, they won't give that till like the last the, the, the day of so the fighters from like europe and stuff they'll fly over they'll be in the hotel and then that night the day the day before they'll get given the uh the the location yeah so when's your um, next fight in king of the streets have you got one yet uh, no, I I wanted to fight now um, between um, like my last fight on BB, BFBA. Yeah, I wanted to get in and fight on King, King of the Streets, but I uh, I had a vasectomy, so I've been uh, recovering. My balls have been recovering since. So I <laughs> you cannot go in there unless you're a hundred and ten percent fit, you know. So it's not something that I would ever do if I had even the slightest little niggle of an injury because it's just uh, the, you can die in there, you know. The the, the concrete floor, yeah, concrete floor and like them type of people that you fight against. Uh, there, it, it's no mercy in there. So. I, I would never ever go there unless I'm a hundred and ten ten percent fit. So yeah. maybe after my next B, BFBA, hopefully maybe I'll get in b- between. Yeah, we'll talk about the next uh, your next fight on the BFBA on the fourth of June against Bash. Yeah. What do you know about your opponent, bro? Uh, you know, I know he's been around a long time, and he's like, uh, he's coming as he said on. When you spoke to him, he's coming to the end of his career now. So, you know, I haven't had the, I haven't heard a bad word about the guy. You know, everybody likes him as a person, and like I'm not a shit talker. You know, at mm-hmm. any time, even if somebody was like that for me, I, I don't need to do that. I let the fight and do the talking. So, um, <clears throat> I, I respect him as a fighter and what he's done and shit like that. But I know we mentioned like he. Uh, thinks that I might like underestimate him, but I don't do that with anybody, especially in bare knuckle. One punch can change everything. So I train and I fight people exactly the same way. Not the same thing doing it over, but the mindset, you know, it's kill or be killed to me. So when I'm in there, like I don't go in thinking this is going to be an easy fight for me. That that'd be fucking stupid on my part, you know? So I go in the same way. I I don't care about what they've losses before or wins before. I'll fight them the same way. I'm motivated to like win that fight in the exact same way, whoever it is. So I'll never ever like um, get cocky and think, oh, this is going to be an easy one for me and fight differently. I'll fight the same way as as I always do against anybody. So it's going to be... It's going to be a good fight, but I'm focused on what I, where I'm going and what I need to do. So we will definitely have a beer afterwards. But when when we step in there, it's going to be on. Like, yeah, have you got any predictions for the fight? Of course, <laughs> I want to win. So I'm just going to do my thing. I'm not going to say anything else but that because I, I'll just do my thing like I always do, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah, definitely, bro. And last thing, you got any um, shout-outs or sponsors that you want to give a shout-out to? 
Uh, yeah, I've got a few sponsors up there. Um, obviously, shout out always to King of the Streets because uh, that's that's my home home from you know where I've come from and stuff. Yeah. Um, Whittle Gas, they sponsor us. Uh, Worldwide Quiz, Randa Offensive. Who else? Ah, uh, yeah, Bald Eagle CBD. They they've just jumped on a down range. All them, they've been been with us for a long time, so. Good one. I really yes, appreciate sir. you coming on, brother. I'm gonna no uh, way, interview Matilda in a bit, but yeah. I'm gonna shut this down, download it, and then we'll come back in, bro. Perfect, man. Thank you for having me on. Not a problem, my mate. We'll stay in contact and speak soon, bro. For sure, man. Take it easy. Please, mate.